You are now listening to Out of the Blank. 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 Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Anna Salvati. Yeah. Hello. It's it sounds spicy, like like a little bit of like <laughs> like spicy mustard or something. Interesting. Interesting. More like spicy marinara. Um, it's Italian, so you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, pasta. Yeah. <laughs> not a big fan of that, but hey, you know what? Each is their own. Watch You're not a pasta fan? What? Uh, I'm a big health nut, and pasta, oh. honestly, I look at that, and I'm like, that's just blank okay. stuff. It's, I mean, it's tasty. In there. What's better than a nice spaghetti and meatballs, even though that's <laughs> not even Italian? Yeah, you know. Like, if you've been to Italy, and you tell them like spaghetti and like meatballs, they're like, what the fuck's yeah. a meatball? <laughs> yeah, they actually get kind of offended. There's actually certain things that you can't eat with like a certain type of pasta. Like you actually can't have meat like on the same plate. It's a, it's a whole thing. I used to live with Italian women. And let me okay. tell you some really good advice. Never, if you're someone that's not Italian, don't keep any open drinks or anything around them because <laughs> they use a lot of hand gestures. And mm-hmm. <laughs> when they talk with their hands, I was getting drinks knocked everywhere. I was like, oh my God, just talk with your mouth, please. <laughs> yeah, it's 100% accurate. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself and what do you do professionally? Um, so I'm from Ohio, which is, you know, we're just, we kind of have a little bit of everything. But professionally, I do also a little bit of everything. I'm an interior designer. Uh, graphic artist, podcaster, photographer. Um, what else do I do? I do I do a lot. <laughs> so, with your job, what exactly mm-hmm. does what What do you mean? Um, so I have kind of multiple jobs. Like I have a like a side business. I do photography, like wedding photography, um, graduation photos, that sort of thing, uh, with one of my friends. So we do that on the side. I do all the graphic design for my podcast as well as co-host it. And then like my actual job is an interior designer. So so what? how did you go like for interior design? So is that like kind of helping people decide what like what would be best for their home or what maybe they like try and, and capture the vision they see in their head? Um, yeah, it's it's a little more involved than some people think it is. Because I actually have a four-year degree, like from an accredited college. Um, I went to the University of Akron. Um, And so you were actually kind of like considered interior architects because we actually take classes on drafting and construction and then also like color theory, uh, 3D design all that kind of stuff. So I actually am proficient in like AutoCAD, but then I can also tell you if your pillows match your couch. <laughs> so yeah, that was always a weird thing that I actually yeah. had a talent for was I could see where stuff should be placed in a mm-hmm. certain room or part of the house. Like, yeah, I started noticing things that like were really weird that people would add on to their house, mm-hmm. such as like people would like have bookshelves and books Mm -hmm. piled up in front near the front entrance or in the family room just because Mm -hmm. even though they didn't read it created a type of ambiance or demeanor to their house like giving it a little bit more credit like oh this guy reads books no he doesn't (laughs) read books I have a bookcase in my room and they're all thrift store books but there's a bunch of Stephen King stuff Mm -hmm. I never take the time to read because it's 100 (laughs) pages long but yeah it's there and then people walk in like oh you read I'm like no <laughs> like what's with the bookcase I'm like I, I don't know it just looks nice yeah yeah I mean that's something that you see quite often is people have things in their house that they don't necessarily use ever um, but it does create a mood or most times it just creates a feeling of being lived in because we know that you know in our houses we don't have everything kind of perfectly, you're not going to buy a bookshelf and not put anything on it. So a lot of times we end up spending, you know, extra money and extra time just finding things to make a house look like a home because 
you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have tchotchkes all over the place and books and DVDs and that sort of thing. And also you do it kind of for your guests too. I mean, you have people over and if they want to read, then they can grab a book and read it. I'm pretty sure we've all encountered the people and shout out to some of the people I live with. They get (laughs) really nice, good looking furniture that does look really, really nice. But then when you go to sit on the couch, you're like, I need to put something down on top of that before you sit (laughs) on it. I'm like, then what's the point of the fucking couch? Yeah. Yeah, we see that a lot, too. I don't want so much (laughs) plastic on the furniture that I slip off of the damn thing when I'm trying to take a seat on it. (laughs) Like your grandma's couch from the 80s. I literally bought myself a stool in the kitchen where I'm like, I'm just not going to even use any of your furniture. He's like, wait, don't sit yet. I'm like, all right, if I can't, all right, I'm just going to sit in the (laughs) kitchen. Is the TV on? I'm yelling in the other room. (laughs) Did they score? What's the, what's the score count? They're like, why don't you just come in here? I don't feel like waiting to sit down. <laughs> you should just brought your stool in there with you. Yeah, I was thinking about it, but then it would have messed up the ambiance in the room. Oh, I, I like get it. That. They got <laughs> chandeliers and Greek oh, statues and all this yeah. stuff. It sounds like I live in a really rich household. I honestly <laughs> don't, but it looks really nice. I have to give you know whoever did it credit. There you go. <laughs> Like my room, like I, I I thought a lot of like what the best type of expression for someone's house, mm-hmm. like the inside of their house tells mm-hmm. a lot about a person. Yeah. You know? So when I, when you design your room, something that you live in, you want it to feel comfortable, but you also want it to express an opinion of yourself as well. You know, you can judge right. a lot. Like for if you're a girl and you bring a guy over, whatever you have out, whatever smells are in the like the yeah. thing, the vicinity, it shows them a piece of you. So if you have clothes all thrown around everywhere, everything's on the floor, all scatterbrained, Mm -hmm. then you know to be a little bit of a messy person. But Mm -hmm. for me, you don't know the type of day you'll have if you just make your bed in the morning because it (laughs) makes your whole room look fucking clean. Yeah. I don't know what type of psychological effect that is. But (laughs) as soon as I make my bed in the morning, I'm like, my room is clean. There's like clothes all over the place. I'm like, I don't care. It looks amazing. Honestly, I think, there's like a admiral, like a Navy admiral who wrote a book about that, where just making your bed in the morning, if you didn't accomplish anything else, you at least made your bed. So I think that's kind of what it is psychologically. Like if you've just had a really terrible day, but you come home and you're like, but you know what? I successfully made my bed. So it's, I think <laughs> it's funny because I can relate <laughs> to that because I can I literally I'll I, I barely sleep. I'll get like two hours and that's it. But then I'll be up at two o'clock in the morning podcasting with someone from another country and I'll do that like all day. But then I'll stop for like I'll have a break or something and I'll make mm-hmm. my bed and I'm like, I fucking accomplished the day today. Just the bed yeah. in general. And I was like, I've done already so much shit. But this is when the day officially was accomplished. I was like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean hey you know if it if it works psychologically for you it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else so how'd you dive into photography was this just an interest or a passion that you had i mean you go from interior design obviously judging <laughs> with your eyes but is it because you just see things from a different perspective um yeah honestly i think that's what a lot of it is if you kind of have an artistic brain or like a right brain as some people call it um you tend to just see almost like I would be inclined to say you have a right brain uh, just because you mentioned that you can see things spatially that probably a lot of other people don't like if something balance wise is out of whack then you're kind of like hmm this room doesn't really look right Um, that tends to be something that right brain people see we can see space and dimension and kind of envision it in our head really well so that translates to a lot of different things so for interior design obviously it's you know your actual room but the same thing for photography um it's just an outlet a way for me to help the world see how I see things if that makes sense it makes sense because I mean when I look at a photo like I'll take I'll, obviously I only use my phone I don't have a professional yeah. camera but I mm-hmm. found like my buddy can tell you stories of so many times we're just longboarding and we're driving somewhere and mm-hmm. I will stop and immediately like get out of the car to take a picture on yeah. my own personal Instagram. I have like uh, a bunch of rocks. I used to get up really uh-huh. early in the morning, take my phone, get, I still have these rocks in the back of my car. I used to call it <laughs> rock stack Sunday. I used to, <laughs> 
stack them up like a giant tower, like 20 rocks, big ones, all the way to small ones. Yeah. And I would get the sunrise at the tip of the rock. I would sit there oh. and be patient for that. And I would set it out. They're amazing photos all taken from my phone. And then I would do stuff with like color effects and all these types mm-hmm. of things. I wouldn't just do the lux like everybody does on Instagram, but oh I would, yeah, <laughs> I would like blacken everything out, black and white photo, mm-hmm. then only highlight the sunset in the background. Yeah. So you can that on the rocks. And then, I mean, I live in a beach town. There's, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people really don't see things from a certain mm-hmm. perspective that I could never yeah. understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the, I'm going to have to check out your personal Instagram, first of all, because those sound right. dope. But I'll, I'll, let, <laughs> I'll let you follow me, okay? Nice. <laughs> but a lot, um, of, a lot yeah. of like my old shots, like I remember my buddy owned Newfoundland dogs. So mm-hmm. they're big. I don't know if you know what a Newfoundland Yeah, huge. Yeah. yeah. Well, they love the snow. And I remember oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like we would just like, it'd be snowing outside and they'd be sleeping outside. We're like, come on inside. We're like, nah, bro, this is us yeah. right now. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a, it was a weird dog to have in the area that we have because we're in a beach town. So it's hot a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I remember one time I grabbed a snowball and I threw it up in the air for him to hit <laughs> it and like catch it. And it missed and just slammed against his face. And <laughs> now you say that about a dog. You didn't understand these dogs were bears. They were, yeah. he was 150 pounds at a year right. and a half old. So <laughs> I did that and he just looks up at me and I took a picture of him. It's him staring at me, giving me the, did you just fucking do that face? Yeah. And there's just snow splattered across his face. <laughs> and it's just like, he's just looking at me like, all right, it's on, it's on. Yeah. Um, it was the most like beautiful aspect of it. And he was a model dude. Like if you had to put a persona yeah. in a dog, it was Zoolander. It was Derek Zoolander. <laughs> Cause he would just come up to you and he would look down so you could see his big puppy eyes. I'll send you this photo. I blackened <laughs> everything out and just kept his uh-huh. eyes that were dark brown highlighted. Yeah. So it's it is perfect. And I was like, dude, this dog is meant for photos. Like, yeah, he's fucking like, are you going to are you is that your phone out? Are you on Instagram? Well, why don't you snap a shot of this? And he would just whip at you. And I'm like, all right. (laughs) It's like that. uh, What is that vine of the the little baby owl? You know, where they like dub over it. He's like, wait, wait, now give it to him. And he like turns around. Here it is. Snap it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like animals, I feel like a lot of animals do that, right? Like it doesn't matter if it's your cat, if it's your dog, like your I fish. Like I think I they just know. Like, I feel like that might be just with some people though, like you and me maybe. That's because true. A lot of people don't see it like that. Like, why are you taking a picture of that? I'm like, like I got out of my car mm-hmm. one time when it was a fresh snow and mm-hmm. you know, those little holly trees with the little red berries. Yep. So I oh, got, let me I, guess, there was snow and ice on it and the yes. way that the sun was hitting it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So much. <laughs> I took a picture. Look, I took a picture of this. My buddy literally was like, hold on a second. Like, what are you doing right now? I'm like, dude, this looks really good. I took a picture of it. It reminded me of one of those movie scenes where they get the camera angle. Like it's, it's a, a mm-hmm. snowboarding movie or something. Yeah. They get the, it was perfect. Just like that. Like, mm-hmm. Everyone has pictures they take and everyone's like, oh, it's usually like on Instagram nowadays, you see people take pictures of what they have. What I did was I took pictures of sunsets and sunrises Mm -hmm. and people were like, why did you do that? I was like, because this is something we all experience and we all see it from a different perspective. Yeah. Like I'm the same way. Like for instance, my friend caught me in her bathroom, standing in her shower, taking a picture out of her glass block window that's in her shower, like in the morning. She was like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, I don't, it looked pretty. So I wanted to take a picture. Yeah. And they look at you like, they don't understand. I'm like, anybody that's a photography person or buys a professional mm-hmm. camera can see angles where people don't see them. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was always something I thought was a little bit weird. It was like, I was looking through the mind of, you know, just somebody that, was different from everybody and Mm -hmm. we're all different in our own unique ways and it really brings one of my all-time favorite paintings and which i have hanging in my room is vincent van gogh's starry night oh solid choice now i love this painting on the concept of all the colors like i'm staring at it right now as i'm Mm -hmm. I'm describing this to you this is he painted this from his a sane asylum window yeah this was supposed to be the town. Like you get to see all these crooked view of it. It kind of looks like a nightmare mm-hmm. before Christmas. But when you start looking at it, like, was he seeing that through his eyes? Was mm-hmm. he seeing, and 
like I didn't understand my fascination with art until I was in college and I took a mm. art history class and I was mm. learning about all these implementations like the original like what we look at as you know pictures turning into mm. shots and turning into like really detailing it and that turning into movies a moving picture mm-hmm. and the 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 strides we've taken with that but also like the original cave paintings that they're now finding out that yeah. turned out that they were actually like movies depicting a mm-hmm. scene not just history recorded yeah that's so cool now do you is like painting like do you like paintings the most or do you also like sculpture or i love like, it all when it all comes art to yeah creativity I, I didn't find my interest in this i thought like oh operas those are boring and then i saw an opera in my music appreciation class we were watching mm-hmm. a live one and i was like dude like this is awesome you get it's a bunch of people getting together mm-hmm. to get really really focused and try their hardest to do something maybe it's not my type of music but mm-hmm. i can't discredit someone for doing something so powerful and invoking such perfect mm-hmm. precision as well yeah um I yeah I totally get that I I take part in like um like I'm an actor in um like dinner murder mystery dinner theaters I know so many people that do that I did not think it was that yeah everything yeah well I don't know if you know anything about Mansfield Ohio (laughs) because it's literally in the middle of nowhere but um well I'm sure I have you seen the movie Shawshank yes I have it's an amazing movie yeah right it's great uh the prison that they filmed at is in mansfield ohio which is like 15 minutes from where i live um and we do a murder mystery dinner theater there every year in march um like at the prison so it's pretty cool did you find that with your creativity it's kind of a little bit like hard for you to stay on one thing all the time you find that you're going off into different things like i have adhd so i'm constantly you know my hands in multiple things at once and yeah it's gotten me in good places and bad places <laughs> at the same time. It also brings a whole nother perspective on the world. Cause it seems like you're seeing it through a different lens. Yeah. Like the, the struggle's real for sure. I literally am doing so many things all the time. Like I love movies. So I'm always trying to go see movies, but I also love books and then I love music. So I'm just listening to music all the time. I love going to the theater. I love being in plays and doing that and you know I write short stories and then I'm in the podcast and then so it just like constantly feels like I always need something moving or something changing just as like a new creative outlet and it's 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 hard <laughs> it's I mean it's definitely like difficult because you feel like you're you're trying to increase like everything and ch- because most people want to stick to one thing and get really really good mm-hmm. at it but you, you know it's difficult when you're doing so many things at once you're trying to m- increase the progress of it all but it's because life can get a little bit bland sometimes when you're doing Mm -hmm. the same thing over and over again you constantly want to feel like you have your hand in different you know outlets or something and i'm I'm looking at some of your photography Mm -hmm. stuff like this is all amazing shots i mean you have pictures of what looks like a chapel window and a wonderful is that a lily or a oh yeah i took that at my church my hometown church um during easter so it's an easter lily yeah and a lot of people think like, oh, that's just because the place you're at. That's just because I'm like, no, you can pull a photo out of anything. You can pull a yeah. good perspective from anything. And, you know, I, I love photography. You know, there's sometimes there are moments where you're like, holy shit, like a lot of people can see it. But then there's times where there's those moments, but no one takes the time to really be in the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think those are some of my favorite shots when I've just kind of stopped and gone oh that that just looks really cool so I I think sometimes that's what makes photography fun and that's honestly what makes you know things like Facebook and Instagram fun is that it's it's an easier way to show a bunch of people kind of how you see the world and and everything like that so I think it's that's kind of the one really fun aspect about social media for me because I unless I'm posting like a really cool photo or like some random flashback I typically don't post at all I mean like it's it's crazy because like when you look at a place you can go a lot of people want to go to Mount Everest and they want to go to these amazing beautiful places I'm like you don't understand you have the same thing in your backyard right 
I mean, there was a little ditch in my backyard that was flooded with water and it was creating a little bit of a, like a waterfall, like a little bit of trickling mm-hmm. down. And I got yeah. really, really close and just saw it from a different perspective and took a picture of it. And had, you know, my buddy lives on the water. So he's got this brush behind his house that he wakes up to every morning. And I'm like, mm-hmm. have you ever just stopped and tried to take pictures? Like we live by the beach, you know, we're seeing mm-hmm. waves that are different every time they stride and hit the ground. It's like, I woke up in the morning, uh, got right when the sun was rising, grabbed a glass, like one of those whiskey ones mm-hmm. with, filled with like scotch. Yeah. I filled it up with a little bit of seawater, placed it in the water so you get to see the foam of the ocean go up to oh, it. Oh, cool. And yeah. Caught the sunrise right through the glass. That's awesome. Like just if, if, if saying that or even explaining what you're doing, like my dad was like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to go take photos. And he's like, OK. <laughs> OK, yeah. Um, do you well, also. F- sorry. Go no, ahead. I was like, it's four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I don't know why you're going oh. to take photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that's real. Um, no. Do you find that even like if you're just trying to take a picture of something, say, because you have to or like for a friend that you have to take like four or five just because you have to get that perfect one. Yeah. Cause you see it from so <laughs> many different perspectives. I, I, know. I remember specifically my buddy was trying to get like, uh, he had a shop and he had these designs he was making with woodworking. And then mm-hmm. like, uh, someone in my family was making paintings. They're like, can you take pictures for me? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and they're like, I just want it like this. And they have an idea of what they want. And you end up yeah. seeing it from so many different angles, whether it's a far back shot, an up close shot, a down shot, you know, a mm-hmm. different angle, maybe open up the window a little bit, get, see if you can get a yeah. natural breeze going in or see if mm-hmm. you, all these background things you wouldn't even think of. And they look at you like, why are you going so like, I just take a picture of it. I'm like, no, you can get it from so many different perspectives. You end up sending them like 10, you know, here's all the ways I see it. And they're just looking at you like, yeah. I just wanted a picture. <laughs> I know that honestly, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because seriously, that is the thing that I hear the most. Like, I just wanted a picture. Like, oh my gosh, like why you got to take 10? And I'm like, it has to be perfect. Okay. Like, I'm not going to give it to you unless it's perfect. It's like, then why would you fucking ask me? Take a picture then. It's like, I don't have the time. It's like, if you, it's that simple just to take a picture, then you don't want my long process of doing it. Then you don't want my exactly. service. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. It it really is a struggle. But I, I like landscapes and sunsets. Is that like your thing? Or is there like something in particular that you just like, if it's there, you're going to, you're going to photograph it. I was actually going to ask you that question. So I I do like nature, but I also Mm -hmm. think if I see a shot and I see something like from an angle that kind of hits me Mm -hmm. in a way, um, more like puts me more in the moment of where I'm at, Mm -hmm. I I, I tend to try and take a photo of that. So I can always remember it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I like photographing like animals and stuff. Like, I don't know how deep you've gone into my Instagram, but there's like one I'm, it's the most proud I've ever been of any photo. It's like a goose standing like in a river with its wings spread. Yeah, and it's that's just a like good the, shot. It's the coolest thing I've like ever photographed in my life. So, but I'm looking that at one's... that and I'm like, that is beautiful. And then I just go to the mm-hmm. one after that. And then it's just like, you're eating um, grilled cheese. And I'm like, that is yeah. just as good as well. Right now. See, that's my thing is I love photographing food. It's like, funny, we're literally <laughs> describing photography to people that are listening. Okay? They're like, know. what the fuck are these people looking at? I'm looking at a grilled cheese right now, and I'm guessing that's tomato soup. It is, yeah. Now listen, th- if you just took a picture of that regularly sitting there, but I feel like, no, you went with the newspaper and you crumbled it up in like a perfect way too. Like it seems like it's a little bit formed, but it's also look has a natural feel to it. And then at the same time, you got it like where the bread is kind of placed over the other piece. So it creates more of like a movie kind of perspective to it. But also like there's just so many factors, especially the table in the back or what it's on. It looks like that's granite or marble. Like Dude, don't call me out, man. But is, <laughs> am I right, though? Am I seeing you, it? <laughs> yeah, you're 100 percent right, because, you know, if that sandwich was just sitting there the way that they cut it, that doesn't look right. You got to like put it at an angle and put it on top. You I get, don't know I what don't, place <laughs> makes it like that. I always get my shit thrown at me. Like, here's your. Yeah, I know. You right? wanted a, here's a freaking taco and just chuck it. At me. Like, oh, shit. 
<laughs> I know it's so funny. But yeah, no, I love photographing food. I don't know why. I feel like in another life, that's what I did. Like I photographed stuff for the Food Network. But um, I mean, I love to cook too, though. So that well, helps. It's funny because like a lot of what chefs do, like when they're creating mm-hmm. something, that's their work of art. So they try right. and go you know, all out to make it look good on the plate. And the next thing you know, mm-hmm. the waiter or waitress grabs it and everything gets shuffled around. It's like, ah. Oh, like I should yeah. have took a picture and then sent it to the customer before he got it. So I, you know how much you fucked up on the way there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. But so how did know. from photography and all these things, like how did you decide that you wanted to, you know, go, go into actressing or just do anything of this type? It's like, this is obviously another yeah. creative outlet, but it's another form mm-hmm. of expression. I actually kind of fell into that accidentally. (laughs) Um, When I went to college, I took like my first year I was an honors student and then I quickly realized that I didn't want to do that much work. So I didn't do that anymore. Um, But I took an honors theater course because I was like, oh, I like art and I like theater. So, you know, Um, well, one of the requirements was to like direct a play which I had never done before in my life. Like we didn't even have a drama program at my high school. So I was like, okay, well, like maybe I should join theater club so I can get like a general idea of what's going on. And then I ended up becoming president of theater club somehow. Um, (laughs) So it just kind of, I just kind of fell into it. And then I directed a play that had like all my best friends in it because I got to do the casting. Um, So just kind of did that. And then I actually auditioned for Macbeth, but couldn't do it because I was directing a different play. So, and that just left me super disappointed because I was like, wow, I've never acted before, but I had this opportunity and I can't do it now. So now I really want to do it. I find like, I I was always really fascinated with theater. Um, I always wanted to be an actor. I was always like, I always Mm -hmm. like, like doing that. I always like doing impressions and things of the sort. But every time I like go and get on stage and I was in front of a bunch of people, I'd get severe Mm -hmm. social anxiety to the point where I'm like, don't fuck up your line, Robbie. Don't fuck up your line. Oh, hey, (laughs) guess what, Robbie? You have to shit, Robbie. You have to shit. I'm like, oh (laughs) my God, the amount of emotions I face. I was like, I'm just going to pass on this one. Yeah, I feel that. I I get that way right before. Like I do really well under pressure. So Yeah, when... you don't you don't have to shit before, but then right as soon as you get <laughs> up on stage, it's like your body's like and I found out there's actually a research fact on this. Your mm-hmm. body's trying to evacuate anything that can hold it back from doing this thing that it considers mm-hmm. dangerous or fr- Yeah. It's that kind of fight or flight response just kicking in. I would love yeah. that to happen when I'm in a situation that would require that, but not when I'm about to get on stage in a white costume in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's that, that does kind of suck. That's definitely not the best part of it, but kind of once it actually starts, it's the coolest experience. Just knowing that like, you're just a different person for like two hours. It's what makes Comic Con yeah. so popular. A lot of kids, they yeah. look up to, or a lot of people, I should say, look up to these idols that they, you know, whether it's a character, whether it's an actor, whether it's mm-hmm. who, name it. It doesn't matter because they dress up like them. It's not they're they're not weird. Yeah. They're just people that admire something, and they feel at one point they can dress up and be comfortable as someone that's not themselves. You mm-hmm. know, we walk around today in society wearing a mask. Why can't you do that for fun? Why can't you do it at Comic Con? Why can't you have this type of expression towards you? It's another, you know, when I see, like, I I never understood Comic-Con until my buddy explained Mm -hmm. it to me. We podcasted about it. And then I went to go see um, one in person. And I was Mm -hmm. like, these are just a bunch of people that have a fandom or they have something they really are passionate about. And they, the amount of time and spent going into their costumes to make it. I'm like, what's different than this and an actor? There is no difference. Yeah. They're dressing up and they're playing their role. They're playing what they want you to see. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting for me because you're right. You know, we do kind of put on this this persona or this mask for everybody every day. I mean, if you work in retail, you go to work and you act happy and nice and you love people all the time. But when in reality, you're like, I really wish you would just shut the hell up and get out, you know? but when like if you're acting in something I don't know why but for me it's like 
that's when I am myself, even though I'm playing another person, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, you feel like you don't have to act a certain way. You don't have to. Well, yeah, obviously you do, but you don't have. Right. To be, you know, it's not that you don't mm-hmm. want to be yourself, but it's like you can be your 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 the true passion you have inside of you to, you know, form a role or act like something mm-hmm. or do something where you can put on this, mm-hmm. like basically passion or art in a way i mean i started looking at art differently i do a lot of um i'm a big person into psychology um that's where i found my fascination for art really leading because my teacher's like what are you what are you what are you here for what are you here for man seriously and i'm like i'm here for psychology but this is a credit class i need to take and he goes right (laughs) all right i'm gonna give you um we're doing a project coming up where we have to we get a type of style of form of um, kind of analyzing or type of art, like whether it's like impressionism on whatever this painting is, mm-hmm. whatever it is. He goes, I want you to do psychoanalysis on these two paintings. And he puts two paintings in front of me. And I'm like, what do you mean psychoanalysis? And he, he gave me the definition for it. And then I looked it up and I started researching it. It's about what you pull from that painting. And right. once I understood that, I actually wrote a paper on it and it got published. Um, oh wow! So I we can talk about writing for sure because I'm an avid writer as well. Um, mostly poetry at like two o'clock in the morning. I don't know why yeah. it my brain feels the need to activate it then, but it <laughs> works. And yeah. um, I'm looking at these paintings and like when I see like Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night or whenever mm-hmm. I, I even see a drop of like just one little dot on a canvas, a lot of people yeah. see that and they go, this guy didn't give a shit. He just, you know, he, he put a toilet in a room. It's like, is it that or is it what we're pulling from it ourselves? You know, when I saw a painting mm-hmm. of a bowl of fruit on a table, I was analyzing the cloth. I was analyzing everything. I was like, is this taking, is this taking place in Italy? Is this happening going on around there? What was the, who's drawing this canvas? And I started creating yeah. a story in my head where I found more bolstering to the painting, the brush strokes creating a certain feature to the painting. And it was like, there's much more than just the the amount of work that was put into it. There's a, a really a type of mystery that leads into something which you can take with photography. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can really take it with any form of art, really. I mean, um you know, if you're just sketching in a notebook or you're painting or photography or sculpture or anything like that, I I feel like you, I mean, art is subjective at the end of the day, but I feel like sometimes we forget that it's not subjective just to the viewer, it's subjective to the artist as well, because it clearly has meaning for them or else they wouldn't have done it, you know. A really good form of art that I really want to go back to this place and see is Hawaii. So they have, uh, yeah, they have a high. I don't know if you've ever been there, but they have a very, very, very high number of graffiti everywhere. They do, yeah. and it's it's a form of art expression. I remember mm-hmm. coming off the airplane my first time there, and I looked up at this building. It's about a twenty story building, and mm-hmm. literally this had to pay to be done. I bet, but it was. The Hawaiian or the fruit punch guy, the, mm-hmm. the, the kid with the red hair, yeah. and in one hand he's holding the world, and in the other hand he's hold he's holding like a bunch of factories and smoke, and the smoke is leading into the earth. And I saw wow. that, and it was yeah. spray painted on a building. And yeah, I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> like this is awesome. And people are just driving yeah. by. And I was like, yeah, you can get that same thing. Obviously you don't want to be the kid that just draws a dick on a wall and goes by, but <laughs> someone that takes the time to form that, like some of the best, mm-hmm. like people look at graffiti as trash. I say, no, it's works of art and expression. Mm-hmm. There's a, yeah. there's an old graffiti in the um, Philadelphia. I think mm-hmm. when it's like, you're going under this bridge and it's Stevie wonder. Hmm. And as like, it's it's like little, like, it looks like he's pixelated a little bit, but the pixelations Mm -hmm. are coming off of him and they're forming into music notes farther down the walkway. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's cool. It's like, does anybody take the time to even get a shot of these beautiful images and share it with the world? Like there's probably Mm -hmm. so much, I bet if you dropped a burrito on the ground, I could easily find a good way to make a picture out of that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I know. I feel like we just get so desensitized sometimes, you know, we're so busy going from one place to the other or just going from work to home or home to work or to the store or the bank or whatever that we just we don't 
take the time to actually like look around and appreciate what we see, you know? Do you think a lot of people just feel like there's not enough time because they're trying to get what they really want to get done? Um, yeah, I think, I think that's half true. I mean, I do think there are people that are very, very busy and they have a lot to do. And, you know, sometimes there just isn't enough time in the day. I mean, I've had those days, but I also think it's just like an excuse sometimes too. you know, like, okay, you really could get up a half hour earlier and take your time and go to work and not like ride the ass of the dude that's in front of you going 10 over the speed limit anyway. See, you know I, think, I, mean? <laughs> I think the problem is death is apparent to a lot of people. It's really, really yeah. relevant in their lives. I mean, it's relevant mm-hmm. in everybody's, but some people like a, a lot of people nowadays feel like they don't have enough time to do what they want to do. So mm-hmm. any minute that's not towards what they want to do, they're wasting. But I'm like, that, yeah. that doesn't make sense that you believe that because you work in a job that is doing nothing to what you want to do and you're living mm-hmm. your life doing that. Yeah, I I completely agree. Um, and I also think it's kind of a way for them to avoid confronting their own mortality. Cause you know, if you never stop moving, you never have to, you don't have to think about it, but you know, if you kind of slow down and realize the fragility of kind of what's around us, then you actually have to be like, Oh, I'm, I'm really not going to be here forever. You know? So I think we're a bit afraid of it too, even though we all know that it is inevitable. It's just, nobody wants to think about it because we don't know what's next. And so that scares us because, you know, human nature wants us to be prepared for things and we want to know what's next. We don't like change. And so that's like the biggest change of all is, you know, regardless if you believe if there's heaven or hell, or if you just die and that's it, or if there's reincarnation or whatever, we don't know. There is no definitive proof kind of across the board for what's next. And so I think if people have to stop and like their brain can just take a minute and they have to realize, oh, you know, maybe I should appreciate this because I'm not going to be here forever. I think that scares people a little bit. Yeah, it's been difficult for me to kind of grasp that on the concert. I have ADHD. I feel like there's not, mm-hmm. like I have too many things that I could be doing and not, and yeah. I'm not doing. But then you look at, like, I've been asked this question and I really honestly feel this way about immortality or being living forever. I wouldn't want that. Yeah. I don't think I would either. I think you get to like where it becomes like the last witch hunter is really where I kind of realized it was Mm -hmm. when Vin Diesel was like, I I saw the streets that I watched loved ones die. I've Mm -hmm. seen the streets is built on blood and war. And it's like, you end up living so long. You just want to die. Like anybody that has immortality, Dracula just wants to be off the earth. They just, they don't want to be around anymore. And it's because, you know, you can do that for 500, 600 years, but eventually you're like, shit, it's the same cycle over and over and over again. And not just that, but like you're left with just the memories of, you know, loved ones and things that you have loved that are no longer there. And it's just, I feel like you would then just start to become detached from everything. Because why would you want to get attached to something if it's going to leave and you're still going to be there? Exactly. Like one of the most beautiful things about life is that it ends. It has a thing. It makes you want to grasp life a little bit more serious. It makes you, you know, Mm -hmm. it sucks because you can only really see that from a perspective when you've been in a near death incident. And that only lasts like two weeks afterwards. I remember. Yeah. And then like three near death incidences. And afterwards Mm -hmm. for like two weeks, I was like, this is not the way to live. You got to live life (laughs) to the fullest. Never know what you have. And then like, you know, my family's like, all right, get the fuck over this one. Like, start <laughs> acting like the normal you. And then afterwards, I'm like, yeah, I'd rather just watch Netflix instead of go and try. <laughs> five, yeah. Take that trip to Japan. I'm good. Yeah, I could use that money and I don't know, spend it on the Call of Duty mods or something. Like <laughs> Exactly. Those are priorities. Let me tell I you. know, right? <laughs> so how did but, you go from doing what you do to do, doing a podcast called Josh knows nothing? Oh, well, I mean, truly he knows nothing. <laughs> so, oh, so it's just shitting on Josh. <laughs> pretty much. He's going to hate them. He literally said to me today, he's like, don't rip on me too hard. And I was like, come on, man. You, you know, I'm going to. Does just but, Josh <laughs> just do nothing all day long? Um, No, he, he just doesn't know anything. He's not the brightest, but. No, I mean, he's, he's pretty smart, but, uh, (laughs) um, no, it's actually, he, he's talked about this for like a while. I'd say 
he's been throwing around the idea for about a year and a half. Um, but he was in the army. And so he just recently got out. He was stationed in Alaska. So when you're 4,000 miles away from like all your friends and stuff, it makes it hard to start a podcast. Um, so he got back this summer and was like, you know what? I think like, it's time, like, let's do this. And so, um, asked me if I wanted to be in it. I said, yeah, obviously cool. And then his brother, Alex then too. So it's just the three of us and we're just kind of figuring out as we go, man. Like, but it just seemed fun to me. I was like, why not? Let's do it. What types of stuff do you guys talk about? It seems like it's a random <laughs> mash of topics. Each one's a little bit different. Yeah, dude, it really is. We just call it a buffet of topics. I mean, it's just kind of whatever the flavor of the day is, man. <laughs> we search, you know, I mean, we'll look through kind of current events and just kind of see what kind of crazy shit pops out at us. Um, a lot of entertainment stuff, you know, we'll talk about movies and, uh, um, you know, like obviously people had very strong feelings about the new Joker movie. So we talked about that, um, you know, weird videos on YouTube, odd news, just really anything that you just kind of look at it and you're like, what in the hell? Well, let's, <laughs> let's talk about some weird things about life. Like what have you yeah. kind of find is a little bit questionable about life? Is it the fact that, uh, let's say we say www instead of World Wide web, even though World Wide web's faster. Um, I mean, the fact that you brought that up is now I'm sitting here going, Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I think people love their acronyms, honestly, <laughs> is what half of it is. And I think people are, even though it is faster to say World Wide Web, saying www, I feel like it does it not make like the, you sound more sophisticated. It doesn't yeah. at all. Well, it's not it's faster. Like, don't cut it down. It's not no. like saying no <laughs> instead of hey. They're the yeah. same length. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like it's just like the lazy way of saying things because that's exactly what it looks like. So why would I say World Wide Web when it's not spelled out for me? But I mean, I'm like, okay, I, I brought up this question the other day. Do you feel like there is a top and a bottom side to bread? Yeah, there is. Right? Thank you. Like, I brought that up to my friends, and they were like, what in the fuck are you talking about? Or the question that nobody <laughs> eats that end piece of bread only on the statistical <laughs> fact that they researched and did a study that the last or that end piece of bread is just unappealing to look at, so they don't want to eat it, so people throw <laughs> it away. Like, fucking wasteful. <laughs> but honestly, though, like, I'll eat – like, I'll toast it. Like, I like it as toast, but – I don't know. There's just something about like store-bought bread that I don't like the end of, but if it's homemade bread, I'll eat the shit out of those end pieces. Now, hang on a second. How do you make your PB and J? What do you mean? Do you oh, I, I, take the I, same I, knife and put it in both containers like a savage or do you get the fuckers <laughs> where it's mixed already in there or do you get okay, a bunch of peanut okay. butter on one piece and then put jelly on the same piece? Okay, well, first of all, if you get the smuckers with the peanut butter and jelly and you don't have a child under the age of six, you're a heathen. Okay, I believe that. I do. I agree. Okay. I, agree. <laughs> I, judge, I judge people <laughs> a lot by how they make their PB&Js. <laughs> Because everyone in my household did it differently. My dad okay. would put peanut butter on one side and mm -hmm. then he would put jelly on top of that. Mm -hmm. And then he would grab okay. the blank piece of bread and squish it together. I'm like, okay, it makes the same product, but it doesn't. I don't know. Right. It's weird. I and yeah, then, like like for my mom, she would grab peanut butter on one slice and then take uh, the jelly and put it on the other slice and then mm -hmm. mix it together and then cut the sandwich in half. Yeah. Um, like for me, I'd grab a steak knife. Yes, a fucking snake, <laughs> a steak knife. The worst <laughs> knife you can use to pour on bread. I'd take a giant glob of peanut butter, slam it down on the piece of bread. I mean, literally, come on, full on like baseball <laughs> pitch, slam it down. <laughs> Then I would wipe it and it would rip the bread. Then I oh would my jelly God. and I would just glob it on top like to where you take the first bite is nothing but bread. And then you get to the peanut butter in the middle to the point where it's too much peanut butter. And you're like, oh, I can't close my fucking mouth. <laughs> so basically what you do is you create an uncrustable without taking the crust off. Uncrustables revolutionized school for me. Oh my God, they're amazing. Don't get me wrong. I love them. Then you can that's toast like, <laughs> them like, holy shit. Yeah, I know. People think that's gross, but I'm all about it. So I need to know this. How do you make your PB&J? 
so I, I do use the same knife. I don't use a steak knife. I use a butter knife, like a normal human. <laughs> um, but I typically put peanut butter on. I like a lot of peanut butter and a lot of jelly. Like, I feel like if I'm going to eat a peanut butter and jelly, I, I want peanut butter and jelly and I want the bread to just be a vehicle. You know, you know what, what I mean? You know what really <laughs> changed my perspective on a good sandwich was when mm-hmm. my brother was like, let me show you something. He took two pieces of bread and I recommend this to anybody. I really mm-hmm. do. You will love it. It's there's no I don't know anybody that doesn't like this. You take one piece of bread, another piece of bread. You take two pieces of cheese, put it on each piece of bread. You leave it kind of so they're not folded together yet. You put pepperoni on it and you put pepperoni on the other one. Put it in the microwave for 10 seconds and then put the pieces of bread together, melted fucking cheese and pepperoni on bread. You can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong, but I would probably toast it. I don't know. That works too, but I'm saying it's, you know, I like that crunch. I do. I do like the crunch too, but I felt like, I don't know, melted cheese. There's something about it. What is your favorite type of like grilled cheese? Like if you could put any cheese in the middle, like what would it be? Ah, uh, see, I built up a lactose sensitivity, <gasps> so I can't okay, have well, any dairy. But I really do. I really do enjoy like. A, a, are we talking about any grilled cheese? Like even like maybe not, not not grilled ham and cheese, but like a nice BLT. Do you put cheese on your BLT? Sometimes I do a little bit of shredded cheese. It does revolutionize the game a little bit. I feel like it's no longer a BLT at that point. Is it a BLTC? I guess. <laughs> okay, stop. We're not we're not doing the LGBT with the BLT. <laughs> no, no, no. I I don't know what it would be, but I I don't know. I feel like at that point it's like a grilled cheese with bacon, you know. <laughs> what, what what's your type of grilled cheese then? Do you go all out? Like I know mm-hmm. some people that dice up tomatoes. They go full on. I'm like that's too much work. Yeah, I t- like I mean if I'm going to make a grilled cheese, I just want it to be bread and cheese. I feel like it's just it's got to be simple. It's not meant to be a big thing. Um, but I really really enjoy smoked gouda. Smoked gouda. Yeah, dude, it's so good. The fuck lifestyle are you living? <laughs> it's actually like a really it's a, like it I don't know. It's really good. It's not an expensive cheese by any means. You find it right next to like the Sargento or the the Walmart brand cheddar. You know, Look, it's pretty cheap, but I, it just it's I don't good. I, I don't buy cheese, but I some I, people yeah. in my house love cheese. So they yeah. go and go, "Can you get this blue cheese for me?" I didn't Ugh, know, I didn't know what no. the hell that was. No. I grabbed it and my hand smelled like complete ass yeah. for yeah. I mean days afterwards i was washing the shit out of it i was like i'm not buying you this anymore (laughs) no blue cheese to me is disgusting i can't it's too much you cut it it smells like someone's shit in the room you're like i don't know (laughs) what to do anymore yeah it really does it's just it's wrong i don't really like like strong cheeses like that though i'm more of like a provolone mozzarella parmesan you know, like, I I don't know. I tend to like those more normal cheeses, I guess. I'm basic when it comes to cheese. All right. I'm about to hit you with some random topics since we're Alrighty. on, we're on uh, your concept basically is a random podcast. Favorite fast food <laughs> restaurant? Wendy's. Okay. Why? I really enjoy their chicken nuggets. <laughs> really? Be- yeah, dude. Listen, I don't know what your Wendy's is like or like what the rest of fast we, food is we had a wendy's like and it at. caught on fire and then they never oh shit okay. now it's a dairy queen <laughs> okay um no like i do not like mcdonald's chicken nuggets ah see so yeah, i disagree a little bit i, I like mean McDonald's i'll nuggets it, the best. if if they're like hot like just got fried i'll eat them right but if I had the choice between McDonald's and Wendy's chicken nuggets I would choose Wendy's I oh, you like the, superior nugget you like the crunch factor I do. I really do. And I like the fact that it's like actual chicken. <laughs> I like uh, Popeye's. Um, their yes. chicken nuggets Dude. are really good. They're like tender. Yeah. We don't have a Popeye's, so that makes it hard. Like it's, I feel like fast food's subjective to like where you're at. I you think, know? what about what about favorite fry place? Like if you're going to get a fast food French fry. Ooh. Hmm. I already know my answer is Royal Farms. 
I don't know if you yeah. have a Royal Farms out there. No, we don't. They have a thing called potato wedges, where it's just like basically mm-hmm. one quarter of the potatoes, those thick cut <laughs> fries, those yeah. big, can look like um, a banana, basically. Like, oh my <laughs> God. Yeah, we call them JoJo's here. Let me tell you, that's like the best. Yeah, those are really good. They're, and they kind of got like that seasoning on them. Oh, yeah. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know the difference of having that and then eat. Like if you have McDonald's fries and you eat that, you're like, holy shit. Oh, what have I been yeah. eating? <laughs> right. Yeah. What is this trash? <laughs> yeah. We just get those from like our, you know, like anywhere that has like a deli type situation. Dude, they revolutionized the game when stores started selling dino nuggets. <laughs> oh, I know. And smiley face tater tots okay now this i didn't know that was a thing smiley face what? tater tots my buddy Ooh. before we were podcasting he can't he was doing a fasting so he basically yeah. he only really fasted the whole amount he slept so he would sleep yeah. till like 4 p.m and then get up and that's how he would start he's like i'm really tired all the time i'm like oh, chris <laughs> you're tired because you're not eating yeah <laughs> like oh that makes sense so he comes over to my house and before we start a podcast he bought this thing from walmart and it's a fucking like a kid's cuisine but it yeah. had a smiley face tater tots and shit i'm like mm-hmm. hold on we're podcasting about this so i start up start it up and we're it's like all of us just shitting on him like there's no nutritional value in that like <laughs> you're going to feel like shit afterwards like dude there's eight grams of protein in this i'm like what eight grams of protein in that he's like yeah <laughs> I'm like, but what's the calorie content? He's like, not good, not good. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, that's that's true though. That's true. They, yeah, shape. I was it about shaped foods. I don't know. That's- like, if you had to choose between like the world's best box of like macaroni and cheese that you could make at home, or like it's all the, the same shit. Yeah, but like if you choose, like I would choose the stuff that has like shapes in it, like the kids version. Just because it has shapes. Oh, see, this is weird. <laughs> it's we can relate this to pasta. There's noodle shape. Yeah. There's the whistle shape. There's the freak. It's so much different. It's all yeah. like shells. It's all the same shit. You. I remember I worked at Walmart at one point. Shout mm-hmm. out to them. Um, yeah. But I remember I was stocking the pasta aisle, and they were like, "Here's elbows, small elbows. Here's triangles. Here's mm-hmm. fucking squares. Here's a pentagon, <laughs> hexagon, triple dissecules." I was like, "The." F- what is the difference? <laughs> like, oh, it's just the shape. I'm like, so we're basically deciding what we're going to put in our mouths based on its shape. Are we all porn stars? <laughs> I don't think they decide based on shape, let's be honest. If look, if you can blow into a noodle, you will fucking buy that noodle. That's a, fair. A whistle noodle? Are you kidding That's me? Fair. My mom's <laughs> That's like, fair. it's food. Don't play with it. I'm like, you bought a legit whistle. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way we're not playing with this that's fair that's fair i mean i i do kind of understand the concept of different types of pasta um i mean that's obviously coming from the fact that i i you am italian, italian and i yeah. make a lot of pasta but <laughs> but i mean obvious i don't know like i don't have that big of an issue with it but i think that's because i i like pasta now what do you think about the (laughs) the quaker's dinosaur oatmeal dude that's my shit i fucking hate oatmeal okay i never used to like oatmeal so here's what i would do i would take the eggs out of the oatmeal and put it in my cream of wheat oh shit you're an inventor (laughs) right because i loved cream of wheat but i hated oatmeal but what's your favorite cereal oh that's a hard one i love cereal like if if it's going to be like a I eat, semi I eat cereal all day so I have 20 oh, boxes yeah. of cereal in my pantry I shit you not I'll send you a picture. I I love cereal. Um if it's going to be like a semi healthy cereal I love me some raisin bran with bananas on top. I ate two boxes of raisin bran in one sitting one time. I dude I props to you I'm, i wish look, I i'm could a do that. fit guy i went for a fasted run burned 1800 calories came home and i ate a box and a half of raisin bran and i did not shit for three days no wait that's not how that's supposed to work no i got no, there's a there's actually i had to look it up on freaking web is there a limit look is there i a looked, limit? i looked this up on web web md gave me three answers one stomach cancer 
Two, stomach cancer. And the third one was stomach cancer. So I decided to take <laughs> my search somewhere else. And I found that if you consume too much bran, it soaks up too much of the water and it blocks your digestive system. Yeah. Like the fiber can't do its thing. They were like, just <laughs> yeah. drink, they were like, drink water. I killed mm-hmm. 20 water bottle filled power aids. Oh my like God. The giant bottles. Nothing. I didn't even pee. <laughs> what it soaked it all up oh my god i felt so uncomfortable i had to lie down dude i feel like at that point you should have just taken an x lax dude when i i I actually did take a suppository because even laxatives were not working wow that's rough man it was not fun it was not that whole experience was traumatizing so now when i see (laughs) that when i see the sun on the box i'm like you motherfucker (laughs) you've ruined me (laughs) <laughs> now, do you remember him wearing sunglasses? I do. Yeah. He never wore mm-hmm. sunglasses. Wait, what? Yeah, it's the Mandala. Yes, he did. You ever heard the Mandala? Is it effect? the Mandala effect? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, he never wore sunglasses. It's actually, you're getting that mixed wow. up with, there was a sunscreen that came out back in the day. That's it. Yep. yep. So you get a mix yep. up with that. It's the same reason why people yeah. in Star Wars with C-3PO, people- yep. Like even the toys did it wrong. Mm-hmm. They have them as all gold. If you watch the films, mm-hmm. his lower right leg is actually silver. Yeah. Yeah. There's shit that just it comes like, through, it slips through the gaps. Yeah, and like how people get quotes wrong and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I yeah. get it. And also that cornflakes was invented to stop masturbation. Okay, that's semi real. That is real. In 1975, yeah. Sir, Sir we Harvey, talked about that, man. Yeah, I podcasted about it too. Yeah, it's so awesome. It's <laughs> Sir Harvey Kellogg thought that sugar would lead to your passions being risen. And next thing you know, he's yeah. doing all this. And then they tried to change the recipe. No, you know who tried to do it was his brother. Yeah, his when brother. When it had sugar because he thought it was too bland. And so he made Frosted Flakes. Yeah, plates. and he's like, don't do that. They're going <laughs> to masturbate all the time. And then... Yeah, you know, the rest is history. We have two of the greatest cereals of all time. See, my podcast, um, there's another one I did off this one. This is the original, but I did a spinoff called Fill in the Blank, a little hat. Ah, yeah, uh-huh. so we focused on specific topics from just like yeah. fascinating stuff from cults, conspiracies to anything you yeah. think of. You type it in on Wikipedia, I was reading you all that evidence, and then we just shoot <laughs> the shit on it. So yeah. one was cornflakes, and then we did one on that. We did one on death by coconut. All the <laughs> yeah. coconuts kill more people than sharks per year. Isn't it crazy? Oh, it's fucking fascinating. The well, that's like, world has. That's like, did you know, like one of the biggest, like on like in like coastal areas, one of the biggest predators of moose is an orca. What? Yeah. Cause like when they like in like a bay area, like when the moose kind of will cross those areas, the orcas will eat them bruh in the water yeah what in the yeah what's a moose doing in the water that's what i wanted to know oh i get it because it, i guess where they're from you see like when i see videos there's always moose that are walking through lakes and stuff oh i guess i forget how big they are sometimes they're massive like have you ever yeah. seen one in person yeah yeah we like when josh got out of the army we drove from alaska down like through canada and then back back to ohio so yeah we, we saw some moose i think like it's a lot of it's really weird because like, you get stuff in your memory that like you saw as you're a kid and then you it hits mm-hmm. you later in life like why did nobody question this like the yeah. fact like nickelback i never thought they were a bad band but everyone shits mm-hmm. on nickelback right thank you i say that all the time i'm like listen when nickelback was big you all loved nickelback you all looked at that fucking photograph exactly and every and you, time it made you laugh and you wondered what the hell was on jimmy's head yes what the hell was on <laughs> Jimmy's head? i don't know but yeah no like it's just i get that like yeah some people are like oh that was a shit movie or they were a shit band and i'm like dude you have posters of them on your wall you freaking had a idol statue in your room <laughs> You have framed tickets. Like you went to that concert. <laughs> you had framed <laughs> tickets. <laughs> or like, um, you know, for instance, oh, let's see. Like every time a celebrity does something that's somewhat controversial and they're like, oh my God, can you just, I, I'm not fans of them anymore. 
I'm like, they're a like, person. You're giving them, you know, you think right. <laughs> don't make faults. I think that was the best thing about TMZ was that they highlighted that these are not gods to worship. Mm-hmm. They're people just like you. Exactly. And it's like, to me, you know, especially like in this day and age when people are like, oh my God, like she voted for Hillary or she voted for Trump. Like I, I'm not, I cannot even listen to their music anymore. And I'm like, seriously, who cares to like can they sing yes are they good artists yes then why does any of the rest of it matter so have you noticed that the same popular trending songs that become like a giant hit but then they're off the charts a couple months later is that they're using a very basically a template that they know what Mm -hmm. bonds with our ears yeah so there's a certain i don't know if you ever look up the the video four chord song but yeah. there's there's a types of key and pitches that our brain really like is at a frequency where our brain correlates a certain type of response mm-hmm. to. And now popular songs nowadays just capitalize on a beat that uses that basis of chords or that pitch. And it makes us love that song so much it gets stuck in our heads. It's really annoying. It's freaking nuts, man. It pisses me off, honestly, because it's like, but then like actually the thing that bothers me in music nowadays, like I I didn't realize until maybe like three weeks ago that this was actually like a pet peeve of mine, but I hate the fact that they all sound the same right now. Like if it's a song from Camille Cabello or from like Anne Marie or from God, I don't even know who's popular right now. Freaking Taylor Swift or something. They all sound exactly the same. And that like really bothers me. Like, dude, you're supposed to be an artist, like be original, like do, do what makes you happy and your expression. Don't do it because you want to top the charts. Like it really puts into like a different perspective when you look at when someone's like, Oh, it's this song. No, it's not. It's actually this song. It's like, we don't even, we gloss over the fact that it's because they sound so damn similar. Mm -hmm. Or even who sings it. Like when, um, Oh my God. Praying by Kesha when that song came out I was a hundred percent convinced it was a Katy Perry song don't discredit Katy Perry's firework (laughs) hey I'm not I loved firework the interview (laughs) fucking made me love that song I know honestly singing with Kim Jong-il I was like this is this is what life's about this is why I've lived to the (laughs) age I've lived like anything (laughs) after now does not matter yeah honestly though like I don't. I know this happens to me, but do you notice that sometimes you won't really like a song? Like you'll kind of be on the fence about it, but then the minute you learn like the meaning behind it, you love it that much more. Okay, so I really loved Andre Three Thousands. Hey ya, yeah. <laughs> Have you looked up the uh, acoustic version by a guy named Jebediah Walker? Uh huh. That puts that song into a whole nother meaning. Right. Fucking Honestly, slowing shit down and telling yeah. you the actual words. Like, oh mm-hmm. shit, this is about a guy that's losing a relationship and he's lost so much already. Right. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Sometimes you get these acoustic covers or even just like the actual artist, like acoustic version. And they're just so good because it, it strips it down. You can hear the emotion. You can hear the intent behind it. It's not just like, fluffed up with synthesizers and beats and all this kind of stuff and you just kind of get the raw the way it was intended to be yeah a lot of people say they don't like covers i'm like but you're seeing that artist Mm -hmm. you know version of it and sometimes it's better than the original exactly like i know this is like a mainstream version of a cover but like when demi lovato covered take me to church by hoser like i thought that was an amazing cover it was so good because it was just completely it wasn't different than the original, but the, like you could tell her intent behind it was just phenomenal. Do you have any songs that like you've listened to so much that you don't ever want to hear it again? <laughs> yeah, what's, I really do. What song? Um, let's see. Oh my God. Okay. I was a lifeguard for six years. I can relate. My story's kind of similar. Please go on. <laughs> it was 2012. But there, it's actually two songs. It's Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen and freaking You Don't Know You're Beautiful by One Direction. If I hear those songs, I will immediately 
turn them off, change the channel, walk out of the room. I don't care. I hate them. Look, I worked at a water park for a couple of years. And the area that I was working in had a speaker that played the same hits over and over and over Uh. again. Call me maybe. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We are young. Yeah, yeah. I swear to God, every time I heard it go, we are young. And I'm like, I will set yeah. your house on fire. <laughs> That's what will, ha- I ended up morphing the words like, call me maybe. How about, how about no? I'm going to, I'm going to ghost you. That's what I'm going to do. Right. You know, yeah. it was, it, I got so sick of it. Whenever I hear it play now, I literally get anxiety. I'm like, oh, uh-huh. I can't do it anymore. Right. Yeah. It's, I don't know what it is. Or like how that happens psychologically, but it it's it literally is an anxiety provoking. I hate it so much. Do you find it weird when you're like on Snapchat and you start seeing things like life hacks and you start to realize like your body is a machine, like but in a different way that there's these hacks you can have to it that you never knew, even though you could be like 60 and discovering this stuff? Um Yes and no. Like, I feel like when I see these life hack videos, like, first of all, I'm just thinking, like, who the fuck thought of that? You know, sometimes. And then other times I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's fucking genius. Why didn't I think of that? Like, <laughs> I, I watch these videos and I'm like, holy shit. Like, did I like did like a, like. All right. So a Chinese takeout box. Yeah. You, how, of it, dumb- how it unfolds into a plate. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I didn't know any of that. <laughs> And like, I know, I know some people that are like, you didn't know this. I'm like, no, no, I didn't understand. (laughs) Did you know that those boxes weren't, they're not Chinese. They were actually invented here in the States to like transport like oysters. So like they would, so they were waterproof. Did you know also that if to most of the restaurants you get now, you can obviously tell if they're Americanized because no Chinese restaurant, an authentic Chinese restaurant will serve soy sauce on the table. They will Mm -hmm. not give you soy sauce. You have to ask for it. Also, if they have a menu out front or they have anything where it's like a to-go container, it's an Americanized restaurant. This always brought up my question of when we say authentic Hispanic food, you go to a place that's run by Hispanic people. It's like they don't know the authenticity behind it. Mm -hmm. I dived into this because there was a guy who moved to Japan when he was seven years old and Mm -hmm. spent 30 years of his life literally working in the art of creating sushi he had to work yeah. four years just working with rice then he had uh-huh. to build up to caring for fish then he built mm-hmm. his own restaurant but no one would hire him because he was white yeah i know isn't it crazy my buddy works at a sushi place and they hired him because he's vietnamese yeah he doesn't yeah. know a damn thing about sushi yeah he just looks like he knows something about sushi he's like what he's like what's a california roll I'm like you don't know what a california roll is He's like, no. He's like, is that just fish rolled up? And I'm like, oh, oh my bro. god, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, I mean, and that's what's funny to me is you have people who are like, oh my god, I love Olive Garden. Like, it's amazing. It's the best Italian food. And then they go to Italy and they're like, I hated the food in Italy. And I'm like, it's because you have this like butter filled, oil ridden, fattening food that you've come to associate with Italian food. But when you actually go to Italy, everything is like super fresh, very light. It's not heavy. Like, so and, I'll, I'll admit, yeah. I'll, I'll admit this about myself. I, the one time I went to Olive Garden when I was a kid, I did something mm-hmm. that a lot of people would be like, that's fucking weird. Breadsticks and ice cream. Oh, dude, I do French fries and ice cream. Fucking if you use vanilla, like vanilla ice cream and you mm-hmm. put garlic or anything on that ice cream. It's so good. I don't know why. <laughs> Honestly, what it is, is it's kind of like the whole salty sweet factor, sort of. You know how when you have something really salty, you need to have something sweet with it. Or if you have something very savory, you need something, you know, kind of. I wish you were sitting at the dinner table with me when I was doing that because everyone was looking at me like I'm an insane person. (laughs) No, I, I get, I get where you're coming from, but yeah, I mean, you have a breadstick that's obviously it's very heavy. It's salt ridden. It's got a lot of fat. It's got a lot of like garlic and garlic goes so well with things that are sweet. Have you ever noticed that? 
it's funny because I became a health nut like seven years ago and I started, I started finding secrets to my spice cabinet Ah, uh where I started realizing if you put human Mm -hmm. on anything, it tastes immediately like Taco Bell seasoned food. Yeah, because that's what it is. And then oregano, if you just dump a little bit of oregano on something, it makes it taste like Domino's pizza crust. Because that's what it is. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have, I, I was killing cravings left and right just by organ, like going through my spice cap. Yeah. It's crazy what, you know, people think they have, like, what people think they have a craving for and what they actually have a craving for. It's insane. Like, I know sometimes I will crave, like, a burger or steak or something like that. And I think it's because it's like, oh man, I just haven't had that in a while or that looks really good. But I've come to just realize that it's like, it's like, no, my iron's low. And so I crave like red meat or I'll crave fish. You know, anything that I, that my body knows has iron in it, it will crave. So I worked with this Haitian girl. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I work at a hotel. So dude, did I, I heard you talk about this. I want to hear the podcast. The Haitian mud cookie? No, the, the goat dinner that she made. The goat. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so this, yeah. This woman made, uh, this, she was a different uh, Haitian girl, but. Okay. Uh, yeah, I work, we get a bunch of people from different yeah. cultures, which I really, really but enjoy. Is it a mud cookie? But okay, so to, to the goat thing though. So she made me this yeah. goat with rice. I was thinking like, yeah. what the hell? I didn't know there was a fucking bone in it. Oh. So it looks like a tender piece of like meat, <laughs> like a dark mm-hmm. meat. And I'm like, oh, well, I've never tried goat before. So I'm eating it. I'm like, this is really good. And I bit uh. I like deeper into it and I hit the bone. Like, it's like if you take a chicken wing, imagine a yeah. chicken wing, but the bone is thicker, like a ham bone. Yeah. And then the, the meat is a lot bigger around it. That's what mm-hmm. it was. Yeah. So I'm thinking they're like teriyaki nuggets or some shit. <laughs> I throw it in my mouth and then bite down. Next thing I know, I'm like, I think I just cracked something. No. Like my skull. Oh, no. But, so with a Haitian mud cookie. So there was another yeah. woman that came recently, um, uh-huh. I think over the summer in the beginning. And she was ta- I did a podcast on Haitian mud cookies and the whole history behind it. Because I was like, mm-hmm. this is weird. that And but the basis of a Haitian mud cookie is people in Africa, it's 90% dirt, 5% mm-hmm. butter, and 5% salt. It's interesting. They eat this because it fills their stomach up with dirt, but it sustains mm-hmm. them so they can stay away from the point of starvation. Right. So she was from ha- Haiti and I asked her about this and she goes, mm-hmm. oh, Haitian mud cookies are fucking awesome. I'm like, what? <laughs> she goes, you've never had a Haitian mud cookie? I was like, no, I don't eat fucking dirt. And she, yeah. goes, she goes, no, my grandma makes this, her special recipe makes them taste exactly like Snickerdoodles. I'm like, but you're eating dirt. And she goes, no, she goes, we order clean dirt. I'm like, you just hear what you just said to me is clean. <laughs> and she's like, I'll bring one in. I said, all right, I can't knock it before I try it. It really tasted better than a snickerdoodle. What? Yeah. It wasn't and, like gritty or anything? No, it was actually really good. It's not like biting sand. The weird thing is when they, she meant clean dirt was she meant she would order it from somewhere that had a, a better substance of dirt. Mm such gotcha. as more iron, more copper. Yeah. And then I researched what was the Haitian mud cookie thing because this was like a popular thing in Africa. And yeah. not only for starvation, but there's a thing that happens. Um, pregnant women get it too. Um, mm-hmm. Your body starts looking for iron, starts looking yeah. for certain minerals that you're not mm-hmm. getting through your diet. So pregnant women will get cravings for dirt. And also it links to geophagia, which is eating trash mm-hmm. and eating these types of things because yeah. your body is looking for nutrients of a certain sort and knows what has been linked to in memory that has mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Which I think is fucking nuts. It's so cool. Like the fact that you can smell something and remember something distinctly that was lost in your actual, like just everyday thinking. Like, a, mm-hmm. like it brings you back. You ever walk into a store, smell something, and then immediately you're like 20 years back or you're 12 years old and you're sitting, you're like, oh my God, I remember when I was a kid and the world wasn't shit. Yeah. 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 I do that all the time. You know, you'll walk in and you'll smell something or somebody's perfume or a candle or something like that. You're like, oh, my God, that smells exactly like my childhood. And I don't know why. And then, like, you just keep thinking you're almost obsessed about it. Like, where do I know that smell from? 
I'll never forget. Like, I, all right, so I have this weird talent. I don't know if mm-hmm. I've actually said this on the podcast. I could smell anybody's scent. Like, we all have a distinct scent. And mm-hmm. nobody ever believed me when I said it. Like, I would hop in the elevator at work and I was like, oh, you know, Miss Carolyn's here. And then they were mm-hmm. like, how do you know that? I was like, she's here. I can smell her. And they're like, what? Yeah. The next thing you know, <laughs> she gets on the elevator. I was like, were you just on the elevator a minute ago? She goes, yeah. I was like, told you. But I do it all the time where someone goes, yeah. who was just on the elevator? I was like, um, yeah, it was us. It was a Spurge. And then they'd be like, really? Spurge was on the elevator? And then they radioed to him. Hey, Spurge, were you on the elevator? He goes, yeah, why? And I'm like, <laughs> fucking told you, man. This thing, <laughs> I can't smell Spurge food right in front of me but i can smell yeah. somebody's scent like i've been in a store and someone walked by me i'm like grandma and i'll turn around like because i smell the person yeah it yeah. leads me to that person then i huh. remember that like distinctly that's really cool yeah it's, i don't it's fucking nuts it's a damn carny it trick <laughs> no it's not a carny trick like i i i totally get it i'm kind of that way with um like soundtracks and like movie quotes like if you can tell like if i can hear the soundtrack i i guarantee you i know what movie it's from or i mean it even gets a little ridiculous sometimes i even know who the composer is just because i've heard so many you know of their works or whatever that it's like oh yeah i mean he always uses like he's always like trumpet forward or something like that you know just something crazy i'm really Um, good with actors Like yeah, I'll be, I'll be watching a movie. I'm like, oh, that's that same guy from like, yeah. you know, I was watching Bird Box and they had the guy yeah. um, that got killed in the grocery store. And I was mm-hmm. like, that's the guy from Get Out. And my mom's like, no, it's not. I'm like, that's the guy from Get Out. And then I showed her a picture. I was like, see, it's mm-hmm. him. It's the friend. Yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. I like I one time, like, for instance, um, in high school, my boyfriend at the time was he said he was watching TV. He was watching a movie. I was like, oh, what are you watching? He's like, oh, I don't remember the name of it. I was like, okay, well, who's in it? He just said, he said, Nicolas Cage. And okay. I said, what's I the said, concept of the movie? Because all of Nicolas Cage's concepts now are the exact same thing. Well, um, I said, okay, well, what's it about? And he was like, I don't know. He's, what, I don't even know if he even gave me a description. I just said, um, is he a gun dealer? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, is it Lord of War? And he was like, dude, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember someone's like, hey, what's that movie uh, with uh, Nick Cage where he can like predict time? I'm like, knowing. Knowing. Great yeah. movie. Yeah. It's funny because like they'll, they'll, they'll do something like that. But if you look at Nicolas Cage's Netflix, like all his movies on Netflix, they mm-hmm. all have the same exact concept. Someone stole his <laughs> wife and he has to yeah. get revenge or someone's out to get him and has his wife for ransom. I'm like, this <laughs> is turning into Liam Neeson, like Liam Neeson, all of his movies, yeah. someone's taking his fucking daughter. Just stop taking his daughter. It didn't work the first time. <laughs> it didn't work the second time. Why do you think it's going to work a third time? I know. Like, dude, you're just going to get fucked up. Okay. Like, did you not see the first two films? Like you do not <laughs> mess with Liam Neeson. One of my no. all time favorite actors and the badass yeah. movie, the gray. Oh, such a good movie. Holy shit. Yeah. That that whole movie getting picked off one Mm -hmm. by one. I love that concept. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is kind of a weird bridge, but it does include Liam Neeson. Have you ever seen Kingdom of Heaven? Yeah, I've seen Kingdom of Heaven. Okay. Do you know who plays the king in Kingdom of Heaven? Uh, You got to refresh me. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. It's Edward Norton. That makes sense. But here's the thing is he left his name out of the credits because he didn't want it to take away from Orlando Bloom or um, like Jeremy Irons or the other character or the other uh, actors in the film. You know, who two actors that get mixed up a lot. Who? Um, Jeff Bridges. And then I forgot what the other guy's name is. What's he been in? He had, oh, we're going to play this fucking game out. I love it. <laughs> He's been in Tron. He's been in. That's um, Jeff. Jeff Bridges was in Tron, dude. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's Kurt yeah. Russell. Kurt Russell. No, Jeff. Yeah, Bridges Kurt. Was in I was. Tron. That, no, that was Kurt Russell. Wasn't he? There's I could have sworn there's it was Jeff, Jeff Bridges. It's There's Kurt Russell and Jeff Bridges, and they look exactly the fucking same. I remember when Hateful Eight came out, they're like, hey, it's Jeff Bridges. I'm like, that's Kurt Russell. Dude, Jeff Bridges was in Tron. So was Kurt Russell. I'm, no, that, no, he wasn't, was he? Google that shit. 
I'm looking it up right. I'm, I'm looking it up right now, and I do not see. I don't. I don't even see him in here. No, he, dude. Michael Douglas is not in this movie. Kurt Russell from Tron Kurt, Legacy. Kurt, no, Kurt Russell. Oh, see, that's the thing is I thought you were talking about the 2010. Kurt, let's see. Kurt Russell, Tron. Let's see. But, oh, yeah. This is nuts. This is, yeah. Oh, I swear to God, it's the Mandala effect mixed with people that look exactly the same. I just want to be like Brad Pitt and can't remember anybody's names to faces because I reached a dumb bar limit. <laughs> literally, he has, he literally legit has a disease where he can't remember people's names to their faces. Yeah. Yeah, that's the worst. Now, all right, so this is something I've been thinking of a lot recently because we're in horror week for, like, everything. Yeah. So I'm thinking, when it comes to the zombie apocalypse, you got a plan? Obviously, I have a plan. I know how to ruin your plan. Do it. What if the zombies aren't, like, the ones from The Walking Dead? I wasn't planning on them being, like, the zombies from what The Walking Dead. What happens if they're from World War Z? What happens if they're from the ones? Dude, there's a movie. They're the, like, I love World War Z. Hang on. There's a there's a movie where the zombies can swim. Danny Trejo's in it. Machete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happens if that's a factor? I threw this at some person that gave me this his long 30-minute plan, and he immediately was like, oh, then I'd be fucked. You don't know what would happen. You don't know if no. your plan would work because you never know what you're going to face. Are they left for dead zombies? Do they all have powers and shit? Are they smart? Uh, can they talk? Is it I Am Legend? Yeah. Like, what Ooh. the hell? Yeah, dude, if it's I Am Legend, I might be fucked, but um, no, I mean, that's that's the thing, though, is if you prepare, though, for a zombie apocalypse, or not prepare, I guess, if you have an idea in your head for what you would do, you can't think of it in one scenario. You got to think of it multiple ways. I mean, if there's zombies like from The Walking Dead, I'm just going to board up my house, load up on bullets, and just take my sweet fucking time. Look, I had a dream of zombie <laughs> apocalypse. And I woke up and it was such one of those real dreams where you get scared yeah. when you wake up. Uh-huh. I get a sweat. And I realized yeah. you just be fucked. Yeah. It just it would just happen. Yeah, Probably. honestly, you're not gonna you don't wanna be the first guy. You don't wanna be patient zero, and you don't wanna be part of the first group of people that go out. You wanna die later on. So you're at least you're like, yeah. at least I tried. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what it is. Everyone's yeah. going to the store saying, food and water, food and water. And I'm like, nah. Nah, I'll yeah. It out a little bit. You know, wait till the numbers dwindle off and, you know, traffic's a little bit light on the freeway. Yeah. What a, <laughs> well, what about, um, like, if you were in, like, a standard format horror movie? Kind of where, where do you fall in that ranking, do you think? I'm definitely not dying first. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it to the end. I feel like I'd be the guy that gets killed right before they get saved. Oh, no. <laughs> I just okay. know it because I end yeah. up being like distracted by like a squirrel mm-hmm. and then a blade just comes out of nowhere right in the face. <laughs> well, that's like, have you ever played um, Dead by Daylight? Yes, I have. Okay. So then you understand Then you've actually been in that situation. <laughs> It's just it, it. You don't know what would happen. Like, uh-huh. like the same reason. Like, I like people always say. Like, I don't know how people run into a fire, and I'm like, I think it's just the mindset of like. There's a also like a really inspiring thing about not being aware or not like realizing the amount mm-hmm. of danger. Like that I know you so are many, in. Yeah, yeah. Like I know so many firefighters that run into fires just not knowing what could happen. They're just brain mm-hmm. is like, I need to get in there and get whatever. Yeah. No, I I totally get that. I mean, on like a completely like way, way lower level than that, like being a lifeguard. I mean, just you're it's just kind of mentally exhausting. I mean, you spend eight hours waiting for somebody to drown. Yeah. You know what I mean? Literally, but that's, it, that's your job <laughs> is to literally wait for someone to start re- like how many dying. people drown like, <laughs> at a water park. For me, it was like nobody exactly nope. nobody's drowning at a public mm-hmm. pool it's like where are your fucking floaties why are you in the deep end <laughs> yeah but i mean obviously you know you have to be prepared for that situation but that's what's so crazy is i remember because everybody always thought we were mean like everybody thought all the lifeguards were bitches and it's like no i just don't want to have to save you you know and then you get the guys that are like oh if i drown are you gonna give me mouth to mouth and it's like 
yeah, I will, but it's going to break your ribs, dude. Like, yeah, I had a couple, you know? <laughs> I had a couple guys ask me that. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> you know, you're, you're sitting there and you're like, can I actually do this? Can I actually like jump in the water? Rest, it's like save somebody and save their life. But then I actually had it happen. I had like a six year old jump into the, the six foot during a pool party. Right. So there's, there's not a lot of people, but the way that we used to have it set up, it's like we would sit like on the picnic tables, kind of where everybody typically congregated, because not really a lot of people went to the deep end. They were always like on the slide or something like that during a pool party. Well, this kid had gone over there, didn't realize how deep it was, and he couldn't get back to the side. But in literally a split second, I had blown my whistle, jumped in. I dove into the three foot and like swam all the way to the six foot and beat his mom there who was running. So it was like, I've never swam that fast in my life. I never will swim that fast in my life ever again. But like, I, it, it just immediately kicks in. Like you lose all like thought of like, well, what happens if I drown or (laughs) if I can't make it there or anything like that? It really is. It's just so crazy how, when you know that you can do something and it's your, it is your literal job. It's your responsibility to do something how quickly it just kicks in and you're like, Nope, I'm doing it. I'm saving this kid. If I got to give out the mouth, I know what I'm doing first. I know I got to check for a pulse. I got to look for this. Somebody's got to call 911. Like it's just, it's insane. Like how quickly everything that you learned maybe a year or two ago, it just immediately comes back. It's from some random reserve in your brain, but it kicks in. So you saved this kid's life. Yeah, pretty much. Now, how long ago was this? Oh God. 2014 2015 ish now imagine if that kid turned out to be a psycho killer and you just saved a psycho killer yeah i know i we have that Should let him drown. obviously yeah i don't Should've i don't i don't subscribe to that if hitler was a baby swimming in a pool would yeah i would you save, save hitler. his life yes would i would save hitler okay i well because the way i look at it is because a obviously i don't know that baby hitler is going to grow up to be one of the biggest mass murderers of all time um yeah, I maybe just think, maybe you not saving him and then him surviving would cause him to hate people. Exactly. Um it's a you damn really just, butterfly effect. <laughs> it, honestly, yeah. It's just you don't know kind of exact what moment in somebody's life causes them to take the path they do. But I mean, obviously everybody hits the you know, I mean Robert Frost was right, you know, to roads converge in a yellow wood and you know You did not so just like, quote one of my favorite <laughs> favorite writers i did robert hayden frost <laughs> one poem that changed my life those winter sundays yeah my all-time favorite there you go well see but i mean there you go i mean even like for you reading robert frost's poetry like that could be a defining moment in your life like who knows where your life would be or where you would be at you know mentally emotionally physically if you hadn't discovered his poetry. Are you telling me if I would have used a butter knife to spread peanut butter on my sandwiches that Obama might have been probably the best president in the world? (laughs) Who knows, man? Maybe. Trump wouldn't be elected all because I couldn't take the fucking time to find a butter knife. Instead, I grab a steak knife with sharp ass edges that rips up my bread to the point. It looks like it just went through the garbage disposal and back. Yeah, maybe. It sucked because you cut holes on the top (laughs) of the bread, too. So when you went to bite into the sandwich, the peanut butter would just leak out all over the place. (laughs) Yeah, that's like when you try and, like, butter bread, but the butter isn't, like, it's not soft enough. Then you add, like, rips holes in it. You add fluff to that sucker, and you just change the game. Oh, dude, peanut butter. Okay, what did you use to call peanut butter and fluff sandwiches? Peanut butter and fluff sandwiches. We call them fluffer nutters. That's a fucking like snack, like a trail mix bar, but it's like peanut butter on a peanut cracker. No, it's that's not. That's what nutter butters are. No, that's a nutter butter, but a fluffer nutter. You're freaking, that's like when you say a word wrong, like, <laughs> like stanima. It's stamina, <laughs> not stanima. I know, dude, but I guarantee you, you go anywhere like, from Ohio to like 
Illinois, Ohio, you Indiana, from Ohio to Ohio. No, you do like like Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, um, Indiana, Illinois, even down to like probably like Kansas and stuff. If you say fluffernutter, people will know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm gonna start saying fluffernutter and see how many people look at me with glazed over eyes. Seriously, well, that's like shredded chicken sandwiches. What the hell is a shredded chicken sandwich? Exactly, it's a Midwest thing. It's like it's kind of like pulled pork, but with chicken. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah, like pulled yeah. pork sandwiches. Yeah, but it's it's shredded chicken. Have you ever had spam asubi? Spam asubi? I'm assuming it's something with spam. It's a slice of spam wrapped on like a uh, like rice, like wrapped like a California roll. Mm-hmm. Dude, I didn't know what this was until I went to Hawaii, yeah. and I was eating like eighty yeah. of those things a day. They're a dollar at the store. Yeah, dude, they ate a lot of spam in Hawaii. Yeah, they're big people. <laughs> you know, the, their fast food restaurant, they serve this thing called poi. Yeah. It's, it's basically mayo and lard. Yeah, like, that's pretty much it. That's yeah. why they're big there, because they put poi on everything. They yeah. Put, like, they feed it to their babies, no joke. They they literally just eat fat. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's pretty much it. They're big and they're lovable. Gotta love them. They really are. <laughs> I well, mean, just look at The Rock. Yeah, uh, hey, hey, his cheat day is amazing, dude. It really is. <laughs> Fifty stacks of pancakes. You're just looking at him like I don't know how you even like. Yeah, we're, we're, where, where did you just go into a coma it? afterwards? Probably. Well, that's why you, it's a cheat day. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's a cheat day. It turns <laughs> into a cheat year when you go into a coma. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Well, Anna, thanks so much for doing the podcast. It was awesome having you on. Yeah, dude, it was fun. Now, to, uh, I want to give like you kind of here a minute at the end to kind of promote yourself mm-hmm. a little bit, like your links and stuff for your podcast. Yeah. So people can see your awesome content. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, no, we're kind of everywhere. So Spotify, iTunes, uh, you can find us on Google Play Music, Podbean. Anything um, Anchor uploads. Ah. Uh, this is the best promotion yeah. for a podcast I've ever Yeah, had. I know. It's pretty great. <laughs> Maybe we should um, switch it to Anna Knows Nothing. Oh, dude. burn. That's dude. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you've ever listened to any of our podcasts, none of us know anything. So Look, really, that's the key. <laughs> this episode, honestly, was just a fun way to shoot the shit, which I enjoy. Like yeah. a lot of people think it's got to be something like serious facts or all this mm-hmm. stuff. I'm like, no, it's the time to get to know somebody and just have a conversation, which I enjoy yeah. thoroughly. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what ours is. We It's just three people shooting the shit, talking about stuff that we're either confused by or just just find it interesting. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, just check us out. We really just talk about a lot of random stuff. Nothing's in order. Just pick one and give us a listen. Really. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Out of the Blank and stay tuned for our next episode.